If you would like to know what it takes to continue to pursue your dreams, no matter what, like no matter what fear of rejection, no matter what criticisms are coming at you or judgments, no matter what the universe throws your way, then this is a really great video for you to watch. So I'm so glad you're here. My name is Macy Matarazzo. I'm the creator of Love Vibe TV and also the Get Super Love System. I also go by Reverend Lunch Lady. I know there's a lot of things going on here. And I am your favorite unicorn wrangler to help you get the tools and the practices that lead you to more of the good stuff, whether it's love or money or creating the business of your dreams. I'm glad you're here. I do have a lot of videos on relationships, so you can check them out. And if you want to know about coaching or any of my other programs, check in the description and you can go find out those classes and jump in. So I've been reading this book, The War of Art, one of my favorite books. I've read it multiple times. It's by Stephen Pressfield. It is a brilliant book for anyone who wants to really move into that next level space of possibility or creation. The key to creating is that when you are asking for something big and different in your life, the natural response is that resistance comes up. And this book outlines every single form of resistance that you can imagine or not imagine. That's actually where it gets really juicy. There's so many different ways that you wouldn't even think of. Things that seem like legit problems that would come up that, okay, well, now I have to stop my creative endeavor or stop having that dream or give up on what it is that I truly desire because this is occurring. Well, that's not necessarily true. So that's what I love about this book is that it reminds us that we are this creator in our life. So I wanted to share with you a couple passages in this book. Um, he has a lot of different little sections that brought up some really cool things, and I know they're going to help you too. So this section is called A Professional Endures Adversity. And so since I'm kind of jumping into the middle, what, what Stephen Pressfield refers to as the professional is the one who stays true, stays committed, no matter what, to creating their dreams. So if you think about an Olympian or you think about an artist or an actor that's been rejected over and over and over again, that's only come to the big screen because they never gave up. Or even, I know for me, it felt like that in Finding Love. I spent years and years and years thinking, well, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm too weird for love and Maybe I should just give up on it. But that desire was still there. And it was just always like nudging and pulling and just calling me. And so I didn't give up, thankfully. I mean, really, when you give up, you give up and then it's over. Um, that's when, you know, you can continue to move forward if you have the right tools and you have the right practices and you know what it looks like when resistance shows up. So a professional is someone who goes for it, right? And so this is sharing a little bit more about that. So this is actually him, Stephen Pressfield, sharing his story about being a writer. I had been in Tinseltown for five years, had finished nine screen screenplays, none of which sold. Finally, I got a meeting with a big producer. He kept taking phone calls even as I pitched my stuff. He had one of those headset thingies so that he didn't even have to pick up the receiver. The calls came in, he took them, and finally one came in that was personal. He said, would you mind? He asked, indicating the door. I need some privacy with this one. So I exited. The door closed behind me. 10 minutes passed. I was standing out by the secretary's. 20 more minutes passed. Finally, the producer's door opened. And he came out putting on his jacket. Oh, I'm so sorry. He had forgotten about me. 
I'm human. This hurt. I'm not a kid. I was in my 40s with a rap sheet of failure as long as your arm. But here's the key. The professional cannot let himself take humiliation personally. Humiliation, like rejection and criticism, is the external reflection of internal resistance. So I'm going to read that again because this is so key. The professional cannot let himself take humiliation personally. Humiliation, like rejection and like criticism, is the external reflection of internal resistance. I love this because this highlights a lot of different teachings that I have seen from other places. I'm sure you have too. One of my favorite is Neville Goddard, and he teaches about everyone is you pushed out. I call it everyone is you pushed out. So when they're talking about the external um, reflection of the internal resistance, it's so important to recognize that sometimes you'll have people in your world or experiences in the world that reflect back something that is a resistance within you. So in other words, in this case, he was there with his stuff, ready to pitch to the producer, and the producer didn't give him the time of day. The producer even forgot about him. And it was in that reflection that you get to see, wow, there's there's some kind of resistance occurring. If I buy this as a problem, if I decide and take the point of view that, oh, I'm not important, like, um, I'm humiliated, this is embarrassing, all of that, and then just like um, wither away, then, then you've taken you and your dream out of the equation. So I like to remind myself, everyone is you pushed out, but then there's another one that we, we learn in yoga teachings that is recognize the other person as you. So him seeing that, it's like an opportunity to go, okay, where am I just not even giving myself the time of day? Even in the writing, he says, um, with a rap sheet of failure, as long as your arm, it's like, he's already conceded to like, I'm such a failure. And that self-concept is then like reflected back and this person didn't even give him the time of day. So I love being aware of this. Another thing that I learned from one of my mentors, Sark, who wrote Succulent Wild Woman, she's written a zillion books, she's amazing. She taught me that um, inner critics are inner critics. So you think of the inner critics as the inner mean girls or that voice in your head that says, you're not good enough, you're not worthy. You know, you should quit. You should give up. No one wants you. Like all of the crazy stuff that we allow to chatter in our heads. Sometimes that can show up. The voice, those words can come out of another person. So your inner critic can show up as an external person saying those things. So knowing this means that you just get to choose to be that advocate, that champion for your desires, number one and only. Like that is your goal. That is that is your guidance. That is your desire is your destiny. So with relationship stuff, when people say, oh yeah, I'd really like a partner, but you know, maybe there are no good ones left, or maybe I'm too old, or maybe I'm this and like digging for all of these justifications and conclusions as to why this isn't going to work, those are fruitless. They're, it's just recreational banter at that point. Because if you have a desire, your desire is destiny. Your desire is the way that the creative consciousness 
is communicating with you, basically. It's how you are meant to be expressed in this world. So you can even start playing with this and knowing that every inspiration or every desire that you have is yours. I share this a lot, but I'm not going to stop sharing it because it's such an important thing. When you get, when you truly get that your desire and your awareness of those desires, like, oh, yes, I would love to have a person. Oh, yes, I would love to travel the world. Oh, yes, I have this amazing, fun dream of being an entrepreneur or whatever the thing is, that that is yours. Like it's your responsibility to to own that, to claim that. I mean, we can ignore it. We can say, oh, well, I can't have that. I can't have that. And guess what you get? You don't get to have that. And you may even notice sort of a low grade kind of depression in your life or a low grade unsatisfaction with life. Like if you're not feeling fulfilled in life, I'm guessing that there's some sort of passion or desire that is being neglected or not heard or ignored. And maybe that is something that you um, decided as a child, like decided that, wow, you know, no one listens to me. And then we just don't listen to ourselves and we do that to ourselves, whatever it is. So my point here is that it's really crucial to be aware of how this kind of resistance from the external world can show up. And if you true choose to buy it as a problem or a sign, or this is why I can't have my desire, or it's just not cut out for me, or it's not in the cars, like any of those sort of like, oh, if it kind of feels crappy, it, it is, and it's not yours. So pay attention to that too. If it feels like, eh, or disappointing or sad, then there's definitely some lies, some lies in the space. And a lie can be, oh, well, I guess it's not in the cards. You know, if that feels crappy. Then it's up to you to go back and be the advocate for your desire. So I'm going to keep reading because, um, I love this. So here's another section here. The professional keeps her eye on the donut and not on the hole. She reminds herself it's better to be in the arena getting stomped by the bull than to be up in the stands or way out in the parking lot. So let yourself be in the arena of your desire. Okay, we're going to keep going because this next section is another doozy. So this one says, a professional self-validates. An amateur lets the negative opinion of others unman him. He takes external criticism to heart, allowing it to trump his own belief in himself and his work. Resistance loves this. Okay, I just want to call out that the pronouns are all over this place in this book. So do not be offended. Use what works for you. I'm just reading it. Um, resistance loves this. So if you take, you know, the external criticism. I mean, any movie star or anybody who's in the public eye or really anyone. I mean, if you are afraid of being criticized or judged, then nothing can happen for you. I mean, people are going to judge no matter what, and there's no way of avoiding it. I have another video on my channel in the Church of Kitchy Love section that I really recommend going to. It's about judgment. I'll put it on the screen. It's a really good one. But the key is if you try to compute a way to not be judged or criticized, you don't exist anymore. Like there is no possible way that you can do that. I know it seems like we can do that. Okay, well, I just won't put myself on Facebook or I just won't um, get on stage or I just won't do that thing. I'll just stay in the crappy job. But even in the crappy job, you're going to be judged for something. So you may as well choose 
something that ultimately really is fun for you. So here's a Tiger Woods story. I do like this story. Okay, Tiger Woods. With four holes to go on the final day of the Masters, which Tiger went on to win, some chucklehead in the gallery snapped a camera shutter at the top of Tiger's backswing. Incredibly, Tiger was able to pull up in mid-swing and back off the shot. But that wasn't the amazing part. After looking daggers at the malfactor, Tiger recomposed himself, stepped back to the ball, and striped it 310 down the middle. That's a professional. It is tough-mindedness at a level most of us can't comprehend, let alone emulate. So let's look at what he did. First, he didn't react reflexively. He didn't allow an act that by all rights should have provoked an automatic response of rage to actually produce that rage. He controlled his reaction. He governed his, his, his emotion. Second, he didn't take it personally. He perceived, he didn't perceive it as a deliberate blow aimed at him individually with the intention of throwing him off. He could have acted out of outrage or indignation or cast himself as the victim, but he didn't. Third, he didn't take it as a sign of heaven's malevolence. He could have experienced this bolt as the malice of the golfing gods, like a bad hop in basketball or a linesman's miscall in tennis. He could have groaned or sulked or surrendered mentally to this injustice, but he didn't. What he did do was maintain his sovereignty over the moment. He understood that no matter what the blow had befallen him from an outside agency, he himself still had his job to do the shot he needed to hit right now. And he knew that it remained within his power to produce that. Nothing stood in his way except whatever emotional upset he himself chose to hold on to. I love that. The professional cannot allow the actions of others to define their reality. So here's what's huge about this. This is what I want you to truly get is that you are the creator of your life. You are the dominant entry entity. And when you have that sovereignty, which means that you are that, you have seniority over your experience, then you can start changing the way you navigate the world. So for example, and this example is really good because yeah, for most people, if, if something like jolted them out of like, you know, their zone and it created an emotional response that may have turned into an outburst or, you know, walking away or, you know, oh, I can't do it now kind of thing, but it didn't. So what I notice is the more we can be aware of these moments where let's say you're, you go on a date and it's a bad date. You really were interested in this person and they didn't look like their pictures and it was terrible. You could take that and go into, oh, there's no one out there. They're all bad. See, this is what always happens to me and go on a rant that then spirals you downward away from your love story. So if your love story is here and you're going on dates and that that's the date, 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 that's going towards that. And then you take a bad date and you spiral the other direction, then that's what you get. You get to be in the puddle. You get to be in the despair. You get to be in the disappointment. You get to be there. I encourage you to play with being aware of what you are choosing. So if you think of those moments as choice points, as choice points to go, wait, okay, I could do the drama. I could do the despair because I feel it like it's coming up for me. Or I could recognize that what that's going to create is this, a downward motion. Or I could choose to do something else. I could do okay, I'm going to make a new choice. Like I'm going to stay true to me 
and my desires and do that thing that really supports me in creating what I want. To me, that's everything. Even using the words, wow, I'm noticing that I am doing disappointment or I'm doing rage. I want to go into this even more in future videos, but right here and now I want to help you get that you are the one, you're the main power in your life. So the more you recognize what your choices create, and sometimes you're not going to know exactly what a choice is going to create until you choose it. But in terms of the ways that you may respond emotionally to something, like, oh, you're noticing that you're going into reaction or resistance. I can't do that or no, no, no. Like, and it's feeling bad. Be aware. Like, okay, like what's the choice that I can make that supports my dream? Any rejection, any criticism, any external judgment, any like thing that um, may elicit a an emotional reaction, you always have the choice to not do that. And one way I recommend to change this is if you notice, because you will start noticing, like noticing where you go into rage or go into disappointment or go into victim mode of this is what always happens to me or no, nah, like nothing ever works for me, whatever the thing is, is that from listening to this video, and I'm going to plant that seed, and you may want to watch this more than once because the more you watch it, the more you're going to get. From watching this video, your body is going to have an alert. It's going to go ding, ding, ding. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I did that thing. I reacted. I went into um, reaction over that criticism, or I you know, spiraled out in anger, or whatever the thing is that may have taken you off course for a while. And then you can go, oh, wait, I can come back to my dream. I can come back to my desire and choose that. So then over time, the space gets smaller in between. So you may notice, oh, a week ago, I did that thing. Oh, wow. I responded in a way that I kind of wish I would just let that go or not, and I'm not saying you don't have any emotions or you turn into some zombie. It's not that, but it is being able to, you know, really own your reality. And when we go into the sad stories about judgment or criticism, there's just no value there. You want to put the value on your desire. When you put more value on your desire and your creation than all of those other things are smaller. It's just naturally when you put your focus on what you truly desire and make that more important than the fear or the other things, then that's what you're going to get more of. So notice it over time, the space in between those incidences will get smaller and smaller to the point where you just don't react to things that you may have reacted to before. So Another resource I want to share with you is if you have not read the autobiography in five chapters by Portia Nelson, amazing. That really describes this process that I just shared. And I hope this was helpful in helping you to stay on course, to be a champion for your creations, whether it's love or money or a new business. And really have your own back. Ultimately, that's what this is about, is having your own back in your life. And when you have your own back, then you don't have to go into like fighting against things or defending against things or worrying or feeling out of control because you are in your life supporting you. So thanks for being here. Share with me what it is you got out of this. I love to hear your nuggets. I love to hear what this did for you, how you applied it to your life. Because truly, if you're applying these things, then that's when you're going to see the changes. And I'm grateful to have you here. If this was fun for you, helpful for you, please like, subscribe, 
and share it with your unicorn friends, invite them over to Love Vibe TV. I appreciate that. And I'm so grateful for all of you who have already done that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you really soon. Bye.